Yes, that's the choice that we all have to make. How are we going to go into business in a way that no matter what happens, we have the opportunity to express some truth and demonstrate that truth. I wanted to finish with the words of Gandhi. He, he always said, we must be the change we want to see in the world. This is being a leader is not telling other people what to do. Being a leader is being an example so that I live my life instead of preaching what, what I think others should do. And I think the question for us is to say, what is it that we stand for? Each one of us. And what does this university stand for? As, a, as an example to the business world, to say it's possible to see business as, as an expression of human values as opposed to a destruction of human values. It's possible to see business as a conscious activity as opposed to an unconscious activity. Um, I, I guess that what I would like is to add to the comment question that Professor Kaysen did in terms of he asked of a, a leader who uh, failed and how did that feel. And um, I would like to bring uh, to the discussion the case of Roberto Goizueta, who was the CEO of Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola company. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the biggest failures that uh, in business history have happened is when they took the decision to launch new Coke. I think it was in 1990, maybe, or 1988, somewhere there. And uh, the market uh, responded very negatively to, to the new Coke concept. And uh, I guess that uh, Guizueta was this amazing leader and with that huge failure, he dealt with it uh, uh, very forcefully and upfront and decided to be the, the player instead of just receiving and being the, the victim of why did the market didn't accept this great idea that we had and all the money that we put into it. Quite on the contrary, they said, okay, we failed. He acknowledged the failure publicly and uh, he leveraged the, the market and said, we heard you and we are going back to give you what you always have liked and give you, which is the classic code. And hence, you have now a um, huge success of classic code. So, so I think that would be a... Yeah, that's a, it's a beautiful example. Thank you. I know that uh, most of your uh, presentation is really addressing entrepreneurs and, and entrepreneurship, but I hear uh, really a very sophisticated pedagogy coming through. Could you maybe say a few words about how, uh, you know, to those of us who are in the business of educating, you know, how do you take these principles? How do we turn the anxiety of our students uh, in the direction that, that you suggest? Well, I. I rarely work with entrepreneurs. I mostly work with senior managers of, of large corporations. Um, and they, they face a lot of anxiety. I mean, in, in a way, they are responsible and they, they feel responsible for themselves but also for lots of people that if they make mistakes are going to suffer. So there's a, I think the pedagogy comes from my own my own experience in my life of, of all the fears that I have, uh, particularly, I guess, a, a, a very significant event for me was I always wanted to be a professor, and I got to be a professor in MIT. And it's like, ooh, I'm an MIT professor. So it was my business card said Fred Kaufman in six point font, and MIT professor in 96 point font. And the <laughs> MIT was, was this big. So, Fred Kaufman was just an appendix to the MIT professor. I was defining, and, and then I was there, and I said, "I don't like it. I, it's it's not that that way of teaching, the, the pedagogy of, of of presenting material and telling people what the truth is. It, it was it was debilitating. I, I I couldn't connect with that spirit. I, I was I always thought teaching is really inviting the other person to grow, not not telling them how they have to be." And, and I, I guess I started trying to de develop something different. How, how do you invite other people to grow? And I guess the biggest, the biggest challenge that I faced is accepting that some people will not take that invitation. 
And that's the risk. The true invitation is much more dangerous because if I know what I'm going to teach, then I teach it and I, I know I'll succeed because I'm going to present the material come hell or high water. I mean, that's the typical thing. But making an invitation, whenever you extend your hand, you, know, you might get declined. And, and it took me many years to, to feel the, the confidence to get declined. I have to confess that the fact that I had quite a bit of success, in a way, allowed me, give me, give me some shelter. So, you know, if someone says, well, that's bullshit or it's crazy, say, well, okay, at least, you know, I fooled some of the smartest people in the world for 20 years, you know, then if this is crazy. So, but I say this to, you know, to say it's not so heroic. I, I had, I had a lot of help in making an invitation and not feeling so anxious. If I had started with some failures, I, I would have been tested much more severely. But it, it, I guess that's the pedagogy. Is the, and I tell people, I don't teach. I, I'm going to offer you something, and then you have to choose, is it helpful or not? And if it is, you take it. And if you grow from it, it's your credit. I don't want any credit. If you don't like it and you don't learn from it, that's okay. It's, yeah, I, I won't take the blame either. I'm, I'm doing my best in offering. So I think it comes from there, the, the, just the absolute, I don't know how to say it, it's the most exciting thing for me to see someone's eyes light up. But they never light up when I tell them something. They only light up when they discover something. So allowing people to discover what's true for them. That, that's a, and when they experience that, they want to do that with their people. So, so it's, a, it's a, I guess that pedagogically, that, that would be the, the principle of, Enabling others. This is this, this ultimately is agape. It's this idea of I I, I want to see people grow. I don't know how else to say it. Thank you very much.